have, I have several roles with different hats on, so just to briefly explain what those are. Um, uh, I'm the Digital Health Innovation Lead, recently appointed at the, at the Trust, working with Peter. Uh, I'm also the director of the Hill that Peter's mentioned. That's a not-for-profit company. Um, but I'm also director and shareholder of a for-profit company called Euphonia, which I'll talk about at the end. The first conversation I want to talk about is a conversation between doctors. So medicine's increasingly uh, a team sport, um, and so sharing that information is extremely important, but conversations are inherently non-digital. And so the problem that we were trying to solve is how to capture conversations in a more digital form. And the project's AWS, which you've, you've heard about. So AWS stands for Oxford Acute Referral System. Obviously, we wanted to refer to the rowing heritage of the university. Um, and it's an electronic system to, to document and manage uh, acute referrals into our specialist services. A quick use case to explain uh, the rationale for this. So I was a neurosurgeon uh, up until recently. Um, we take referrals from across the region. Uh, and this particular patient is, is a genuine example. Um, it was a, well, I say elderly, but maybe not elderly in, in the years to come, but 75-year-old chap with a high-grade brain tumour. So for those that don't know, that's a, a pretty abysmal diagnosis. Um, but what happened is he got referred three times over three days to three different teams by three different teams at his local hospital because he came into A&E and then he saw a medical team and then he got transferred to a different ward. And so lots of conversations were happening between lots of different individuals and none of them were really joined up. Uh, and the sad thing about this is that at the end, no one talked to the patient about what was wrong with him and, or, or, or you know, what his wishes were and actually end up not needing or having any treatment. Uh, and so we want to improve that for the patient, but we also want to improve things for the organisation. And, and the reason about some of those things are the, the problems with that communication is, is what's blurred out in the background, which was how referrals were managed, which was bits of paper in a cardboard box. And that's not to say that Oxford was particularly bad or neurosurgery was particularly bad, but actually that's something that happens in most specialties in most hospitals across the world. Um, and there are huge opportunities, not just for the patient, but for the organisation to improve the communication and the confidence of the people that we work with, but also the time and, and sadly also improving uh, the costs that are associated with medico-legal cases. For those of you that don't experience a kind of referral path, you might think it's as pretty as simple as this. Someone comes into a local hospital, they need some specialist advice, they call the, the centre, they have that advice, it's communicated to the patient and it's documented somewhere. The reality, sadly, is it looks much more like that. Um, multiple conversations between multiple people, referring to others in the care pathway, and some of it documented, but most of it not. What we were trying to do with ORS was turn it into this, where digital technology is the centre of communication and the ground truth that everyone refers to. And actually to take the step beyond that, to be more patient-centric and to bring the patient into that as well, which is something you can only really do with digital technology. You can't do that if, uh, if lots of people are trying to communicate with paper and telephone calls. We were focused on trying to develop a system that was usable for the healthcare staff. Uh, and so with, um, with colleagues from Oxford Computer Consultants who are here, um, we developed this interface. And so it's really a customer relationship management system, a, a help desk system for, for other industries, but repurposed into a, into a um, healthcare product. What it means is we can collect data, which we didn't have before, and that might seem silly, but actually this is incredibly simple uh, metrics that really we didn't have a full handle on. And so this is a number of referrals coming into the neurosurgery service. Um, we went live in that service about a year ago uh, as the initial site. Um, and so what this can tell us really objectively for the first time is that we definitely don't have a weekend effect, which you might have heard of in neurosurgery. In fact, referrals are much higher over the weekend. We can look in even more detail about wh when referrals happen. And that means that we can start to think about uh, how we change our service. And this is where the sort of savings and the optimization comes in. So, so referrals peak through the day, but actually there's still a big shoulder of referrals when the hospital's normally shutting down, which we need to deal with. And we can look about how our services um, is seen by others. So this is the, by hour of the day, how quickly we respond or the neurosurgery team responds to referrals. Um, and there's this obvious peak here an obvious peak here, and, and for those clinicians in the room, it won't be too difficult to work out, but that's the time when handover and ward rounds occur in the evening and the morning. And so, you know, we can start to think about how we do something about that to improve our service. Again, looking at trying to get objective data here, um, 
before ORs and after ORs, the number of referrals per day is basically the same. But gratifyingly, we saw significant decreases in the number of calls coming through our switchboard. So if you remember that chaotic um, diagram of calls coming back and forth, this is what we're losing. And so that's saving time for everyone involved in the process. As I said, we were really focused on trying to make a, a system that was usable and pleasurable to use as much as is possible with a new system for our uh, healthcare staff. And again, gratifyingly, in a small survey we did after about six months, we found pretty positive responses from, from people, even though effectively what we're asking them to do is to, is to do a little bit more work to, to put information into a system rather than just pick up the phone and, and ring someone. Um, so that process is ongoing. If you want to talk to, to me about it, that's great. Also, James Groves is here, who's from Oxford um, University Innovation, who's, who's helping think about how we take that forwards. And we're moving into other specialties in the coming month or so. The next conversation I want to talk about is the conversation between the doctor and the patient. Um, and this is through the company that I mentioned at the start called Euphonia. So Euphonia is a, a startup based in the um, uh, incubator program of Oxford University Innovation. We've had support from the Science and Technology Facilities Council, High Performance Computing Center, and also their Harwell campus. Um, uh, and what we're looking about is how patients engage with healthcare. Uh, this slide's a couple of years out of date, but shows that people are willing to engage across a whole spectrum of, uh, of healthcare needs. And companies like YourMD are now digitizing that process, and we have autonomous chatbots uh, whereby people can try and understand their diagnosis. But text based chatbots um, are not really a particularly intuitive form. Um, we might sort of refer to fiction here. So 30 years ago, Star Trek predicted, if you, some of you remember the film, um, you know, the keyboard, how quaint, when talking to the mouse. You know, it, 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 30 years ago, we knew that Alexa was coming. Uh, and then her film from last year or the year before uh, is kind of required viewing for anyone working on this project. So this is about you know, how embedded a autonomous, artificially intelligent operating system can become. And so what Euphonia is trying to do is develop a voice chatbot for healthcare. Um, and what the system is, is something that engages with healthcare users via telephone interface. So we don't require any particular technology or device or any particular training. We're aiming, therefore, to avoid unnecessary appointments because we can reach out to people and communicate with them about their health, um, but also to be able to detect deteriorations in their health early because we can do that at a scale and a frequency or a timings that simply are not possible using normal human healthcare staff. Our, our initial use case here are people with chronic disease managed in primary care. So you've heard earlier in the day about how much expense and time that takes up. So $900 billion a year in the US alone. But there are a whole range of other reasons where we think we can add value to the healthcare uh, pathway process. We've done a pilot in a general practice, actually up in Liverpool, um, mainly because of the link to the uh, Hartree Centre. Um, and our roadmap at the moment is we're continuing our technical development with the uh, Science and Technology Facilities Council. We've got a partnership with a research and design agency to continue user centered design. And we're about to build an MVP and do a pilot. Seed funding raised the later in the year. Uh, Victoria, who may or may not be here, is, is available to talk about that. And finally, in the last couple of minutes, uh, the Hill. So the Hill is, as Peter mentioned, a vehicle really to try and help projects both like ours and like Euphonia. So ideas that come from within the healthcare ecosystem here, but also ideas that are slightly outside, or beyond really an outsider, that want to come into healthcare. Um, it's an organization that's been formed in partnership with the Academic Health Science Center and its partners, but also with the support of the Academic Health uh, Network here. And what we're doing is trying to provide a forum for people to expose their ideas and also to have access to the key opinion leaders that are necessary in healthcare to kind of get those ideas into action. And so this was the first pitch event that we ran uh, back in uh, October, November last year, where people such as Peter were able to sit on a panel and hear ideas, such as the idea from John Willem about optimizing the care of haemophilia. 
our process is that we wish to try and help people with ideas and also needs from a wide range of disciplines come in and be supported by a combination of expertise in the healthcare staff, investment and industry. And so, for example, we have an expert in residence program that runs at the moment where we bring those people together. Help endorse and adopt those ideas with support of those healthcare organisations that are part of the AHSC uh, and AHSN, aiming to get impact both for patients, professionals, but also commercial impact to be able to sustain this going forwards. Um, hopefully that's on time. If you'd like to talk to me, I'm obviously going to be around. Um, my OUH email address to talk about the uh, ores and the hill projects and euphonia at the bottom. Thanks very much. <laughs>